What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be covering some of the most important tips and tricks in terms of balancing and optimizing your roster in franchise mode. Now the reason that we're going to be getting underway with a lot of franchise tips is the ride-in rosters or scout scoops roster is officially released, the full miners roster with all of the prospects. So make sure you guys go check that out in the roster vault. Like I said, it is called the full miners roster and it is in there under ride-in rosters. So give that a, a check out the roster is great and I can't wait to get underway with my franchises this year now that the roster is finally released and I really can't wait to get some of these important tips and tricks videos out to you. Now the first tip or the first topic that I want to talk about in today's video is whenever you actually click on the roster screen here within franchise mode, what you're going to do is you're going to see on the right side, it has all of this roster information, this roster breakdown, and this stuff is incredibly important for you. And I want to kind of run through how to utilize this information, how to read this information, and essentially how to balance and optimize your roster by utilizing this detailed screen that they give you on the roster tab. So if you take a look at the top right hand corner of the screen, it's going to give you these numbers uh, where it's going to show you how many players you have on the injured list, waivers, 40 man roster and active roster. And those numbers are pretty dang important for you guys. Um, you know, not necessarily the uh, end all be all of today's video. We're really going to be talking more about the quote unquote depth chart screen on the bottom right. Um, but we're we're going to address address first this roster information in the top right and break down what exactly this means. So your 40 man roster is essentially which players can be put on your major league roster. And so you'll see for 40 man, we have 26 players in the MLB level, 11 at AAA, two at AA, and one at single A. Generally speaking, you're going to want to have a majority of those players, those 40 man players be in the MLB and AAA levels because those are the players that are immediately capable of helping you out at the MLB level. And so you guys can see this Giants roster. I have at least two guys in AA that are on the 40 man and one guy in the single way that's on the 40 man roster. And that's not, uh, you know, optimizing my roster because that's, you know, players that are generally speaking, not going to be able to help me out. So if I go to the bottom of my 40 man roster, I can take a look at some of these guys that are, you know, like a 56 overall player. I'm not going to want to have this guy up in the major leagues. And so my roster isn't necessarily optimized having a guy in single a on my 40 man roster. And so there's a couple different things you can do with that. You can try to trade that player away. You can try to remove them from the 40 man roster and pass them through waivers. There are a couple ways you can go about it. You just have to be careful because if you try to pass a guy through waivers, chances are good that they're going to be claimed. So like, let's say I tried to pass Gregory Santos, who's a, a young 65 overall B potential through waivers uh, in order to take him off the 40 man roster. That's not going to help me because that guy is going to get claimed. Um, and so, you know, essentially what you need to do is, you need to plan ahead of time whenever you're establishing your 40 man roster and make sure that mostly guys that can actually help your team are the ones that you're putting on your 40 man roster. And you guys can see if I click remove from 40 man roster, it's going to say you'll need to pass him through irrevocable waivers, continue with this move. So be cautious whenever you do that. And then here are the most important numbers on this roster information screen. If you look down at the row that says active, you'll see 26-26, 26-26, 26-26, and then eight. These are your numbers and the limits of players that you can have at each level within your organization. So you can have 26 players during most of the regular season at the MLB, AAA, and AA levels. And I believe it's like 10 or 15, I think it's 15 that you can have in single A before you max out your roster. Um, but for example, if I were to take this single A player and promote him to double A, what's gonna happen is you're going to see that it's gonna give me a red bar there where it's showing I have 26 out of, or sorry, 27 out of 26 players in double A. 
So in order to balance out your roster and maximize your roster, you're going to want to make sure that you have all 26 of 26. You don't want to have less than 26. You don't want to have more than 26 because it's not going to let you advance that way. It's going to try to auto move somebody and that's, you know, potentially not going to be good for you. So in order to balance out your roster, you want to make sure that you have 26 players at each level and then, you know, any number of single A players that you want to have down there at single A. Remember that double A, triple A and MLB all play games single A don't really play games so they don't progress much so I mean you can have guys at that single A level um, but it's not necessarily like the most helpful place to have players at so that's generally where you reserve your bottom bottom level players that you don't really think are going to become anything for you that's kind of where you stick them at or really low overall players. And now we can go down a little bit and take a look at the depth chart screen. And this is, in my opinion, the most helpful tool in establishing your roster whenever you get your franchise up um, or, you know, as you go through your franchise and the most efficient tool for balancing your roster. And so how to read this is essentially this. If you look at the very bottom, it's going to say position. It says MLB and then triple A. So essentially what's showing you is that the top number is going to be MLB and the bottom number is triple A. Likewise, you can press square to change league and it goes to double A and single A. So for example, let's take, up, take a look up at left field. If you take a look at left field, the top number shows two, the bottom number shows one. So that means I have two players at the MLB level and one player at the triple A level. The important thing to remember to utilize whenever you are taking a look at this screen. So now we've established, you know, what level these players are playing at. The important thing to remember and to utilize here is a total balance between a position group in terms of what level the players are at. So if you take a look at the combined left field, center field, and right field, I have two left fielders, one center field, two right fields. I have a total of five outfielders at the MLB level. And likewise, I have it balanced so that I have one, three, and one at the triple A level, which is giving me a total of five outfielders at the triple A level. And so generally speaking, what I do is I like to have five players at the outfield position. Same thing with the infield. I like to have a grand total of, it looks like, seven players or six players at the infield level. I stick with six, so you have four players and then two basically backup bench rotational type of players to back them up. So, you know, one third baseman, two shortstops, two second base, and one first base or two first base. And then in addition to that, I have six starting pitchers, five relief pitchers, one closing pitcher in terms of pitching. I tend to go with five starting pitchers, six relief pitchers, and one closing pitcher. However, uh, you can balance that however you like, whether you want to have an extra starting pitcher, whether you want to have an extra relief pitcher, kind of depends on what your organization looks like, whether you have the talent to do one or the other. Uh, you can balance it however you want. And then I have two catchers at each level. Now, if you take my total base number of players that I like to have at each position group, you'll come out to a total of 25 players. So, for example, let's say I have 11 pitchers, or sorry, 12 pitchers across my entire pitching staff between starting relief and closing. I have two catchers. That brings me up to 14. I then have five outfielders, which is going to bring me up to 19. And then from an infield perspective, I have six infielders which is going to bring me up to a total of 25. Now that is my base roster balance is five outfielders, six infielders, 12 pitchers, and two catchers. What that allows you to do is that allows you to have flexibility. So you have the limit of having 26 players at each level. I have a base of 25. You can then go and call up the next best player that you think you can utilize at that level. So for example, the MLB level, let's say I'm at 25 players because of my base there. And there's a prospect that I really want to call up to the MLB level and get them some playing time. I can call that player up. Or let's 
let's say there's a man on my 40-man roster that just looks like they could help my team out. Maybe they're a good bench bat. Maybe I want an extra reliever just in case. Maybe I want an extra emergency catcher or whatever your extra need might be. You have the flexibility with that 26th man in order to get that done. But the base roster balance is, like I said, five outfielders, six infielders, 12 pitchers, and two catchers. Now, the final number that is shown here on this screen is the number below the players at each level, AAA and MLB. And that is, for example, if we take out a, take a look at left fielder, it is the total number that you have versus the total number of players required at that position. And so it is telling me under left field 6-3. That is telling me that I have six total left fielders and I need three within the total organization. So if we go ahead and take a look at left field, you guys can see that we have a total of six players here. At a minimum, we need to have three players at that position within the organization to field a roster. So one at MLB, one at AAA, and one at AA. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is optimizing your roster. And the reason that I'm going to dive into what I'm about to dive into is because I've always preached that playing time is by far the most important factor when you're trying to develop your players in MLB The Show. And so we're going to be taking a look at rosters from a perspective of getting players as much playing time as you possibly can in order to quicken their development and make sure that they get up to the level that you want them to get to. And so let's take a look at center field here, for example. You will notice that I have the triple A and double A players maybe a little bit out of order in your opinion because of the overalls. So a lot of people might take Hunter Bishop because he's a higher overall and put him in triple A. And they would put Bryce Johnson down in double A. However, what this is going to do for you is this is going to put a B potential young 21 year old 66 overall player sitting behind two other players that are better than him or as good as him. And this is going to create playing time problems between these three high potential prospects. And so from a roster perspective, a lot of times it is better to take that C potential player or player that has a higher, a lower ceiling that you don't necessarily feel is going to be a long term impact player for your franchise and put them at that position where he is going to be sitting behind the two center fielders that are better than him. And then you take the guy that has better potential and put him down at the level below. And so what that automatically does for him is that puts him as the number one center fielder. That's going to give him the most playing time. However, what you'll see is that we have a ton of center fielders on this roster. This Giants roster is pretty stacked at center field, to be honest with you. So there's a couple of different things that you can do if you have too many players and you don't feel you're going to get enough playing time for them. Make sure that you go around and take a look at your roster because a lot of these players can play various different positions. Ramos here, for example, can play both left field and right field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at left field and I'm going to look at right field. Well, left field, we really don't have a lot here. We have a couple of D potential players. We have an A potential player that's 27 years old, so he might not necessarily become that great of a player. So if we want to get one of these guys playing time, it really doesn't matter which one we take, but we can make them a left fielder. And so I've personally for this franchise selected Ramos, so we're going to take him and move him by editing him to left field. Very short, very simple. Now let's go ahead and go over and look at left field, and you guys can see at center field a little bit less competition going on here you know not as jam-packed now we have a couple of b's at double a couple of b's at triple a and then this c potential guy that's going to be rotating and not getting a ton of playing time and then we can go to left field and we can see ramos his overall went up as a left fielder which is nice because a lot of times players moving positions can get a increase in overall so that's fantastic and now we have this guy over here at double a that is potentially going to skyrocket and overall because he's going to get much more playing time as a starting double A player or maybe we can make him the starting triple A player and, and move Lamont Wade down to double A. Either way he's going to get a lot more playing time here in left field than he would have behind all of these players in center field. And the other thing to consider is the lineups and rotations especially 
if you don't want to take the time and be uh, basically a micromanager of your farm system, this is the best way that you can optimize your roster because it's going to, generally speaking, take the player that is a higher overall and insert them into a lineup. So if we take a look at left field, it's going to prioritize Ramos over anybody else in that double A lineup because he's a 69 overall A potential uh, as opposed to a 63. So we know he's going to get playing time especially if you have it on auto. Now, you know, like I said, some people will go in and micromanage that stuff. I try to, as much as I can, go in and make sure that these players are inserted into the lineup and getting playing time down in double and triple A. Um, but realistically speaking, you're never going to be able to guarantee that. Uh, and the best way to do it is by simply making sure that they are sitting at the proper level and not behind somebody that's a higher overall. So, you know, Ramos, for example, if he was at center field, would be sitting behind even C potential guys like Bryce Johnson. So I recommend that you guys do that with your entire roster and go through, you know, the, the kind of the base logic is the best overall guys play at triple A. Then you go down between double A and single A. Um, but make sure that guys are actually getting the playing time that you want them to have like Ramos here. He's an A potential guy. I want him to get playing time. So I need to make sure he's the starter at a double A or triple A level. And that is going to help balance and maximize my roster. And then the final thing that you're going to want to do in order to make sure that you're optimizing your roster and balancing your roster out is whenever you're going through your roster, you can press L1 and R1 to cycle through the positions. But you can also cycle through the 40-man roster, the Class A roster, the AA roster, the AAA roster. And this is a really good way to cycle through these players and take a look to see if maybe a guy is at a lower level than you would want. So what I often do is I start at the class A roster and I check for A and B potential players and I'm looking to essentially see, hey, is there anybody sitting at the class A roster after I've done everything, balanced my roster out that maybe I want to move up to double A or maybe move up to triple A? Right now, the only players that I might consider would be these two C potential players, but since they're not B or A, not much of a concern. But then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to double A and I'm, I'm going to sort through here and I'm going to take a look at the players overall and their development ratings and say, okay, who needs to be where? Maybe it would be better for me to take Marte here and move him down to Class A because he's a 54D potential and go to the Class A roster and move up one of these you know, C potential 65 overall players because, you know, Sweeney here or Swiney, however you pronounce his name, might be a better prospect, you know, outlook wise than this 54 overall D potential that's older. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take him and I'll move him to the class A roster since he's a pitcher. And then I can go to the class A roster and move this pitcher up and they'll be able to balance out between the lineup and the bullpen. And, I, you know, to be honest with you, a 65 overall C is probably going to do better no matter where you place him whether it's a relief pitcher, whether it's a closing pitcher, he's going to do better than that 54 overall player was. So take him and move him up to double A. These class A roster, double A roster, triple A roster screens are a really good way to get a look at who you have in those locations, as opposed to just looking at them from a position by position basis. This is a really good, um, you know, breakdown for you guys to help you balance out your rosters and make sure you have guys where you want them. And so I can look and I, I can see my triple away roster here okay I have a 62 overall that's really not helping my organization maybe I should release him and move up one of these guys from double a that is a higher overall and higher potential you know and you know you'll want to look and see if they're going to get playing time or they'll be sitting behind somebody else but that's the general theory behind what you're trying to do in terms of balancing and optimizing your roster hopefully this helped you guys out if it did leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and comment down below with anything you guys would like to see next like i said super excited to get my franchise started super excited to start pumping out franchise related videos for you and hopefully you guys find them helpful leave that like subscribe to the channel comment down below i'll see you guys in the next one and i hope you guys have a good night